dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Zachary Scott in Above Their Comrades, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where the great names in motion pictures star in plays written by the nation's foremost authors. This is the true story of the founding and establishment of the country's highest award to its heroes, the Congressional Medal of Honor. In the principal role, we present Mr. Zachary Scott, and above their comrades is the stirring title of our play. The curtain for Act One will rise in just a moment, but first, here's Wendell Niles with an important message. Friends, your Army and your Air Force men have a job to do. It's a job of vital importance to them, to you, and to the world. You see, their business is peace. Yes, your Army and your Air Force have as their mission preservation of world's peace and maintenance of security for America. And they're deriving satisfaction from serving their country and from making for themselves a career of self-improvement. They're helping you as well as themselves. Give them the support they deserve. And now once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Above Their Comrades, starring Zachary Scott as Henry Wilson. <laughs> The list of America's military heroes form a scroll of honor, long and glorious, etched by the deeds of the brave, remembered in the hearts of the grateful. And atop the list are those few who, through some deed of unbelievable valor, have earned the highest decoration America awards to her defenders, the Medal of Honor. Our story tells how this highest military honor came into being. It's the story of a shoemaker, a soldier, and one of America's outstanding public servants of the past century, a man who, had he not died while serving his country as a vice president, might have been president of the United States. You see, these three, the shoemaker, the soldier, and the statesman, were all one man, and his name was Henry Wilson. Henry Wilson did not win the Medal of Honor himself for there was no such award when he served as a soldier. But Henry Wilson, almost more than any other American, was responsible for its creation. Let's start with Henry Wilson, the shoemaker. The year is 1834, and Wilson, a determined young man, pauses in his work at the appearance in the shop of his employer, a rather pinched-faced individual named Legro. Mr. Legro? Oh, Mr. Legro. Yes, Wilson. Yes, yes. What is it? Mr. Legro, I'm once again making preparations to leave your shop. Leave? <laughs> and for what this time? I want to go into business for myself. For yourself? You insane. You don't know the shoemaker's trade. You've been in here only a short time. Takes years to learn this trade. Yes, but I've been learning. I'm sure I know enough to go out on my own. Oh, you do? Well, what about our agreement? You've contracted to work for me for at least six months longer. Huh? What about that? I'll pay you. I'll pay you for my release. Pay? Where would you get any money? I've managed to save enough to buy myself out, Mr. Legro. Here a little, there a little. I assure you, I have the necessary amount. You are an idiot and a fool. May heaven help you. Well... It seemed that heaven did help young Mr. Henry Wilson, fool and idiot, for he had soon built up a profitable shoemaking business of his own. And as every young man in such a position is quite certain to do, Henry just happened to be walking a young lady of long acquaintance home one spring evening. Well, here's my gate. Unfortunately, it is. Uh, Miss Harriet. Yes? We have now known each other a considerable length of time. Quite considerable. As you know, I make shoes. I must confess that in pondering what I'm about to say, I've worn out a pair of my best shoes pacing up and down. Yes, Henry. 
I suppose I could say it best this way. I want more than anything else in the world to be your devoted husband. Oh, Henry. I, too, wondered what I would say, if you should ask me. I don't know what to say, except kiss me. Henry Wilson's personal affairs prospered, but an unselfish desire of serving others soon led, quite naturally enough, to a desire to serve in the legislature in his home state, Massachusetts. At a big gathering following the election, beside the platform which had been erected, a nervous man is talking to the leader of the band. Now, 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 have you got it, Herman? Duh, I think so. Well, I'll keep it to you once more. Your band plays after Mr. Wilson speaks, but before the refreshments. Have you got it? Duh, yes. Before Mr. Wilson, after the refreshments. No, no, Herman. After Mr. Wilson, after. Oh, dear, they're introducing him now. Let's have it quiet. It's my privilege to introduce to you your new representative, Henry Wilson. Thank you. Thank you. My good friends, it is indeed a privilege to speak to you this election night when I see before... Oh, no, heaven! <laughs> it was inevitable that a man of Wilson's talent and desire for service should progress in his career to the Congress as a representative of the state of Massachusetts. And then, in 1860, as a United States Senator, we find him discussing a new responsibility with his wife, Harriet. I'm so proud of you to think that my husband is now the distinguished chairman of the Senate Military Affairs Committee. And husband of the beautiful Harriet Wilson. An even greater honor. Oh, now, Henry. Well, a senator can be in love with his wife, can't he? Oh, my dear. You always make me feel so important and so wonderful, even when I'm tired. Harriet, you have been feeling stronger lately now, haven't you? Yes, Henry. I think so. You know, Harriet, now that I'm chairman of the Military Affairs Committee, perhaps I'll be able to do something about that favorite project of mine. Oh, yes, your Soldier's Award. Yeah, that's right. I'd like to call it the Congressional Medal of Honor. And once established, a precedent would be set for awarding outstanding bravery. You've convinced me about your award, my dear, long ago. Well, let's hope I can do the same thing with those members of Congress who are against the medal. Oh, I'll accomplish it. Just like I once bought out my apprenticeship. Here a little, there a little. Of course you will, my dear. Uh, in that regard, I'd like to have a dinner tomorrow night for Colonel Monet. He's a member of the French Military Commission here to survey our army and make recommendations. I want him to recommend this award. Anyone else coming, dear? Well, Colonel Ephraim Ellsworth has promised to drop by for dinner. Oh, it's always lovely to have Ephraim. Uh, he'll be leaving right after dinner to join the president. Mr. Lincoln has invited him to a big reception at the White House. Oh, wonderful for Ephraim and his future. Yes, indeed. Well, now, my dear, you're sure this dinner won't be too much for you? No, Henry. For you, nothing is too much. <laughs> well, Senator Wilson, I must say the best cooks are not confined to France. This has been a superb dinner. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it, Colonel Monet. Of course, Colonel Ellsworth here is our star boarder. I most certainly am. Uh, too bad that uh, Madame Wilson was unable to join us. Well, she's not been quite herself, and I insisted that she remain in bed this evening. Oh, it is nothing serious, of course. Hmm? Oh, no, I'm sure it's nothing. Uh, Colonel Ellsworth, it is just a small matter, but uh, my curiosity has been aroused. You Frenchman, eternally curious. <laughs> I was wondering. In France, we military men always wear our medals at social functions. Colonel, I notice you do not wear yours. Is it a custom? We have no medals in the American army. No medals? But I do not understand. But surely you must have some way of rewarding the soldiers and officers who distinguish themselves. I'm afraid we don't, Colonel Monet. Oh, c'est impossible. No medals at all. I agree with you, Colonel Monet. I believe that we should have some tangible way of expressing appreciation for our soldiers. Particularly, I am interested in establishing an award for outstanding valor. Senator, you'd better come at once. Your wife has fainted. Oh, you'll excuse me, Colonel Monet. Uh, of course. Ephraim, you'd better go and get the doctor. I'll get a doctor here as fast as I can. Well, Henry? It seems to be pneumonia. Doctor says the crisis has not been reached. I don't know, Ephraim. I 
I feel right about this. Henry, I know that nothing possible can harm Harriet. Nothing. You make it sound better. Aren't you going to be late for that reception at the White House? I'm not going, Henry. I have sent regrets to the president. Oh, but Ephraim, it isn't every colonel in Washington who receives an invitation to an important affair at the White House. And it isn't every colonel, Henry, who has a friend like you. I want to stay with you, Henry, until you're assured your wife is out of danger. God bless you, Ephraim. God bless you. Doctor says you may see her now, Senator Wilson. She's going to be all right. Oh, thank heaven. I'll be going now. All right, Ephraim. Harriet and I both thank you. I know. Tell Harriet the star boarders looking forward to that next dinner. Soon. Goodbye, Henry. try to talk too much. Henry, I was sorry about the dinner. Was it all right? Well, it was perfect, my dear. And your Colonel Monet? He's on our side. Oh, I'm glad. And what you said, here a little, there a little. Maybe... Yes, my dear. Yes, I'm sure of it now. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going first to get you out of that bed and fit as a fiddle again. Because I want you to be in that gallery when Congress convenes again and I introduce my resolution. <laughs> Quiet. Quiet in the Senate. Quiet, gentlemen, please. Mr. President. Mr. President. The chair recognizes the senator from Massachusetts. Mr. President, as chairman of the Military Affairs Committee, I would like to put on the docket the following resolution, that the Congress shall cause to be created a Medal of Honor to be awarded to those soldiers who shall most distinguish themselves by gallantry and action. Oh. Oh. Mr. President. The chair recognizes the senator from Illinois. Well. Mr. President, I move that the resolution of my esteemed colleague from Massachusetts be tabled. Such an award as he proposes smacks of monarchy. In the long and glorious history of our great nation, we have always struggled to maintain our democratic principles. Yeah. Mr. President, Mr. President, I am in full agreement with the senator from Illinois. It is quite true that we must maintain the principles of our free republic. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, there must be quiet in this chamber. Senator Wilson, I'm afraid we must postpone this discussion. I have just received word that armed forces of the Confederate States of America have attacked Fort Sumter. <laughs> gentlemen, this means war between the states. <laughs> We pause briefly from our story, Above Their Comrades, starring Zachary Scott, to bring you an important message from our government. A career with wings is the career of the future. Many young men who are aware of this have taken a step that will give them wings, Air Force Aviation Cadet Training. When they have completed the training successfully, they will receive their pilot's wings and a commission as second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Outstanding graduates will receive regular commissions while others will have the opportunity to qualify for a regular commission while they are on active duty tours. The requirements are that you are between the ages of 20 and 26 and one half, with two years of college or the equivalent, that you are physically fit. As an aviation cadet, you will be on your way to a great career. Find out now if you can qualify. Get your application today at your nearest Air Force base or U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Remember, only the best can be aviation cadets. And now, act two of Above Their Comrades, starring Zachary Scott as Henry Wilson. Senator Henry Wilson's efforts to have Congress create a Medal of Honor to be awarded for valorous deeds to members of the Army have temporarily been postponed. The Confederacy has attacked federal territory and preparations are being speeded to put the country on a wartime basis. 
We find Wilson and his wife, Harriet, completely recovered from her illness, talking to Wilson's friend, Colonel Ellsworth, at Senator Wilson's home in Washington, D.C. It's a terrible thing, this war between the states. Yes, think. American against American. Brother against brother. War is never pleasant, Harriet. But this... Henry, this is going to be the hardest job of all. Leading men in armed warfare against the men who, only a few months ago, were brothers in arms. And what about Washington? Do we have troops enough to defend the capital? I think so. While we're virtually surrounded by Confederate territory, we can always summon enough federal and militia troops for the protection of Washington. Well, that's reassuring. Oh, there's not too much to worry about at this point. As a matter of fact, I'm taking my regiment over to occupy Alexandria tomorrow. Oh, I didn't know that was planned so soon. Will there be trouble? Surely there must be some Confederate troops in Alexandria. Only a few. We're allowing them a few hours to leave. Then we'll disembark. We're going by boat and occupy the city. Well, Ephraim, good luck to you. Thank you, Henry. Take good care now. We wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Well, you're making this sound so ominous. Now, don't worry, Henry. If I can't take care of myself, I have some very brave men in my command who will. Why, I dare say there won't even be a shot fired tomorrow. The men are all disembarked and in formation, Captain. Good, Sergeant. At ease. At ease, men. As you know, we are now in Alexandria. From the docks here, we will march in and occupy the strategic points of the city. We expect no opposition, but remember, this is Confederate territory. Any questions? Company, attention. Forward, up. Forward, up. Oh, here comes Colonel Ellsworth, sir. Captain, halt the men. Oh, yes, sir, Colonel Ellsworth. Company, halt. Company, halt. Captain, you see the Confederate flag over that inn? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I'll tear it down. If you please, Captain. I prefer that privilege myself. Oh, yes, sir. Let me have a couple of men. I'll give you Private Brownell. He's one of my best men. Oh, Brownell. Yes, sir. You and these two men go with Colonel Ellsworth. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. You wait here with your company until we return. <laughs> Hold it here. Brownell? You and your men cover me. I think I can reach the flag from the windowsill. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Here it is. Ah, well, Colonel, you certainly sweated that one out. Easier than I thought. I was sure someone was inside the building. Ah, the place is deserted. Well, we better have a look-see just to make sure. Look out, Colonel. Get back at me. Huh? <coughs> oh, good work, Brownell. You got him. I'm you all right? I'm okay. He missed me. How about Colonel Ellsworth? He, he hit the colonel. Colonel Ellsworth is... is dead. I'm Brownell, Senator Wilson. I said you wanted to see me. Yes, won't you sit down? Thank you, Senator. Colonel Ellsworth was a very dear friend of mine. I want to thank you for trying to protect him at the risk of your own life. It was all in the way of duty, sir. No, it was more than your duty. You deliberately put yourself in the line of fire. You could have been killed yourself. Anyone else in the outfit would have done the same, Senator. We all thought a lot of Colonel Ellsworth. Well, Brunel, I want to express my appreciation. And there's something I want you to know. I've been trying for some time now to get a bill passed to create a Medal of Honor for Outstanding Bravery. And if successful, I'm going to see that you are awarded that medal. The death of my friend, Colonel Ellsworth, has made me all the more determined that men of your caliber shall receive the recognition they deserve. Thank you, sir. With the nation in a state of crisis, Wilson's duties as chairman of the Military Affairs Committee occupied his every moment. Then, late in 1861, Congress adjourned. Immediately upon adjournment, President Lincoln summoned Wilson to his office. Oh, come in, Senator. Come in. There's something I want to talk over with you. Thank you, Mr. President. I know you feel the tragedy of the event that has befallen our nation. Yes, Mr. President. And in a very personal way. The loss of my dear friend, Colonel Ellsworth. I have that report. However, we must pursue our objective with firmness in the rights as God gives us to see the right. Wilson, 
You've been doing a fine work in the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President. I have in mind for you an assignment, a special assignment. Is it permanent? No, just between sessions. It will terminate when Congress convenes again. Well, is this mandatory, Mr. President? No, no, I'll explain it and leave it up to you whether you want to accept. I'm appointing a commission to study mobilization and manpower requirements. I want you to serve on the commission. I'd like to, Mr. Lincoln, but I feel I could be of even greater service in uniform. Uniform? Yes, sir. I've been offered a temporary commission as colonel in the Massachusetts State Militia. I'm going into active duty between congressional sessions. You're going me one better, Wilson, serving in the regular forces. I don't like to refuse your offer, Mr. President, but That's I do... That's quite all right, Wilson. I'm sure you will be of invaluable aid to the nation in uniform. Well, I'll be back when Congress reconvenes, Mr. Lincoln. And there's one project in particular I want to take up again. Creating a Medal of Honor. No wonder they call you the soldier's friend. Good luck, Wilson. And when you return, good luck on your soldier's medal. Members of the Senate, I move to take up Senate Joint Resolution Number 82 to provide for the presentation of Medals of Honor to the men of the Army and the volunteer forces who have or who may distinguish themselves in battle during the present rebellion. Mr. I President... The chair recognizes the senator from Illinois. Before the discussion goes any further, I should like to ask why we need such a decoration as Senator Wilson proposes. For one thing, we have no army medals. But Senator Wilson, is it not true that we already have a decoration known as the Order of the Purple Heart and also one known as the Certificate of Merit? That's true, and it's not true. What do you mean? The Certificate of Merit was originated during the Mexican campaign. What's that got to do with it? As the name implies, it is just a certificate, a scrap of paper. It's an award! Can a soldier wear a scrap of paper? What about the Purple Heart? He can wear that! The Purple Heart was originated by General Washington during the War for Independence. Does it, it matter when it was originated? I the don't Purple think Heart is now obsolete. It was awarded only once. It no longer is a gentleman. It can be revived. The Purple Heart is not a military Gentlemen. The Army does not need medals or acts of awarding medals. Gentlemen, quiet. There must be quiet in this chamber. Gentlemen, the discussion is getting out of hand. You are now quibbling over small matters. The clerk will read the roll and a vote will be taken on the resolution. California. California votes on. Connecticut. Connecticut, vote aye. Illinois. Illinois votes nay. Indiana. Hello, my dear. You're home late? Yes. A very busy day. Just come here and sit down. I have something to tell you. Yes? You've often said in your struggle to establish the Medal of Honor, here a little and there a little. Well, this is really very little. It just arrived this afternoon, and it's for you. Why, it's a pen. <laughs> what bearing Don't does you a pen... do my dear. This is the pen President Lincoln used today to sign your bill creating a Medal of Honor into law. Harriet. <laughs> On July 12, 1862, President Lincoln signed the bill providing for the Army Medal of Honor. It was a triumph for his zealous advocate, Henry Wilson, and a triumph for all those brave soldiers who, through their valor in the field of battle, have earned the right to wear the medal. As long as America must call upon her brave men to defend their native land, there will always be those who distinguish themselves by gallantry and intrepidity above their comrades. They are the winners of the nation's highest award, the Medal of Honor. The curtain falls in the final act of Above Their Comrades. Our star, Zachary Scott, will return for a curtain call after this important message from Wendell Niles. During the recent war, 60,000 physicians volunteered to safeguard the health of American soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Today, a small fraction of this number is asked to help regular Army and Air Force doctors keep our ever-growing Army and Air Force the healthiest in the world. There are three jobs for these physicians. First, preventive medicine, 
to maintain highest health standards possible for soldiers and airmen. Second, medical and surgical care for the sick and injured. The third, research, to improve medical knowledge, not only for the benefit of military personnel, but for the good of people everywhere. If you are a practicing physician or surgeon, you may be commissioned in the grade for which you are qualified, up to and including that of colonel. And you will have the vast resources of the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force medical research facilities at your service. Write to the Surgeon General, U.S. Army, Washington 25, D.C., for full details. Now back at the microphone, our star, Zachary Scott, and our producer. Zachary, I wish I could give you a citation for your fine portrayal of Henry Wilson. Thank you, C.P. When the Hollywood Coordinating Committee told me about your invitation to do an authentic story based on the Medal of Honor, I was very pleased. The invitation really came direct from General Hanley. Oh, I, I didn't know that. By the way, it was a good story. Thanks to the author, W. James Bastion. So I got interested and did some research on my own about the Medal of Honor. Oh? Yes, maybe your listeners would like to hear a couple of facts about it. I'm sure they would, since this is the very highest award our government gives for conspicuous gallantry. The wearer rates our greatest respect. And admiration. That's right. Now, do you have any idea how many Medals of Honor were awarded in the last war? I could guess. All right. But remember, there were over 13 million in service. Well, let's say about 1,000. No. The latest figures I could get show only 332. In all branches? That's right. Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. Now, do you know what that means in percentage of recipients? You mean the number of men per hundred who received it? Per hundred? Look, CP, only one man received the Medal of Honor out of approximately every 40,000. Amazing. But you know, I think everyone feels that each man who went into battle was a hero, and if needed, would have served beyond the call of duty. I most certainly agree. Well, I've given you my facts and figures. Now, what facts can you give us about your play for next week, CP? Next week, Zachary, and ladies and gentlemen, Yvonne DiCarlo comes to our Theater of Stars in a dramatic play titled Seven Candles. This is the story of a woman's intense love for her husband, which overcomes his disordered state of amnesia to regain their former happiness and affection. Fine. Now be listening. And please extend my thanks to the good general for the invitation. So long, C.P. I'd be glad to. Goodbye, Zachary. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Yvonne de Carlo in Seven Candles. Until then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Zachary Scott appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by W. James Bastian, with music under the direction of Eddie Scrivani. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.